So in this lesson, I want to look at the different ways we can talk about the future in English. So we've got many, many different structures we can use. Uh, in this video, we're going to focus on using the present simple, using the present continuous, will, and also be going to. We'll look at some examples and then we'll do some practice together. Let's go. So have a look here. What, uh, what do you see? We can see the word departures, different destinations. So this is something we would expect to see at an airport. Now imagine two people having a conversation here. One person asks, what time does your flight leave? Another person responds, it leaves at 6.30. Now focus on the structures used here. Does your flight leave? It leaves. So this structure, of course, is the present simple. But we're not talking about something, you know, a habit uh, or something we do every day or regularly. We're talking about something that's going to happen in the future. So we can use the present simple to talk about something that is scheduled to happen in the future. So let's uh, have a look at a few more examples of this. We have a class next Wednesday. The class is scheduled to happen next Wednesday. My train arrives at eight tonight. And it is my birthday tomorrow. So these are all examples of how the present simple can actually be used to talk about the future in English. Okay, now uh, you can probably see in the top right corner of the screen uh, an invitation. Um, there's an invitation here because I'm having a party next Saturday. The structure this time, I'm having a party. I am having, it's not the present simple, it's the present continuous. But I'm not talking about something happening right now at this moment. I'm talking about something that's going to happen next Saturday. And that's because we can use the present continuous to talk about future plans or arrangements. And uh, just a bit of revision for you guys. The form we use in the present continuous, so we use the verb to be plus a verb with ing. And of course, to be is used in the present, so just be careful. I am, you are, he, she, it, is, and we, they, are. So let's have a look at a few uh, more examples of using present continuous to talk about a future plan or arrangement. I'm meeting a friend after work. So this is an arrangement that I've made. They're coming to visit us tomorrow. Again, another arrangement. And she's viewing an apartment tonight. Now, of course, before you decide to rent or buy an apartment, it's very important to have a look at it first. So in this example, this person has arranged a viewing for tonight. And that's why we're using the present continuous here. Uh, you've probably also noticed that the contracted form is much, much more common in English. Uh, so you're much more likely to hear people say, I'm there, she's, rather than I am, they are, she is. Uh, this is especially true in spoken English. Okay, uh, what do you see now? We have some football players. It looks like they're celebrating. Uh, the team is Brazil. They've just scored a goal. I think Brazil will win the match. So what am I doing now? The match is still happening. I'm making a prediction. And one structure we can use to make predictions is will. So again, we can use will to make predictions about the future. And our form here, it's just will plus the bare infinitive. Now the bare infinitive is just the infinitive verb without to. So let's look at some more examples. I think it'll rain soon. So... Imagine you're outside, you're looking at the sky, and 
and you can see a lot of clouds. It's not raining now, but you're making the prediction that it, it will rain. You'll definitely pass your exam. So maybe you have a friend who's a really good student. You've noticed that they have been studying a lot. So you make the prediction, you'll pass your exam. But you're so confident you want to express this. So we can use the adverb definitely. Now just be aware, when we use definitely with will, it comes after will, but before the infinitive verb. So you will definitely pass. Brazil will definitely win. Uh, we will definitely go. Okay. Uh, another example here. He probably won't come to your party. So this time we've got the negative form. And of course the negative of will is just will not. But we use the contracted form much more often. So instead of will not, we usually say won't. And once again, I've used an adverb here. This time we're using the adverb probably. But just be careful, because with probably comes before won't. Okay? So will, definitely infinitive, probably won't, infinitive verb. And one more example. It'll be a sunny day tomorrow. So the weather forecaster can make this prediction. Great, okay, so uh, what about now, what do you see? <laughs> You've probably realized by now that I'm uh, a bit of a football fan. So here we can see, it uh, looks like Ronaldo is taking a penalty. I think he's going to score. I think he's going to score. So once again, I'm making a prediction. Talking about the future, I'm saying what I think will happen. But I'm not using will, I'm using another structure. And the structure here is the verb to be plus going to uh, plus infinitive. So we can use be going to to make predictions about the future in much the same way that we can use will plus uh, bare infinitive. Another example, uh, I'm going to travel to Spain in the summer. So here, I'm not making a prediction, am I? You know, if somebody said they're going to travel to Spain in the summer, it's very likely that they've already uh, they've already done some planning. Maybe they've booked the tickets, they've done some research, they've had a look at hotels. So here we're using be going to, or we're using it to talk about a future plan. And usually when we use be going to, the decision about the future plan has already been made before the moment of speaking. Now just our form, be going to plus infinitive. Let's have a look at a few more examples. I'm going to accept the job offer. See this person, they've been offered a job, they've had a look, um, and they've made the decision. They've decided they're going to accept the job offer. And this decision was made before the moment of speaking. So it's a plan that they have made. Uh, she's going to visit her relatives in Italy this Christmas. So of course your relatives are members of your, your family. It can be your, uh, your cousins, your aunts, your uncle. Uh, again, once again, it's a plan this person has made. And John's going to move to a new house. So John, maybe he's already viewed the house. He's paid the deposit and he's, he's made this plan. One more example, he's gonna be a big star. So you can see here, it's a little bit different to the other examples. Instead of going to, we've used gonna. Now this is a very, uh, a very common form in informal or spoken English. The meaning is the exact same. It's just a much more informal way of expressing it. Uh, so if you're doing the IELTS or Cambridge exam, Definitely stick to uh, the correct form, you know, to be going to plus infinitive. But if you're just having a conversation with your friend or with a native speaker, you may notice that they say gonna instead of going to. And that's totally acceptable in informal English. Okay, uh, now one area that can be a little bit confusing 
for non-native English speakers is the difference between be going to and will. So let's explore this in a little bit more detail now. Both these forms refer to the future, but there is a slight difference between the two. Both will and be going to can be used to make predictions. So I think it will rain tonight is the exact same as saying, I think it's going to rain. We've used two different structures, but we're expressing the same meaning. We're making a prediction. However, have a look at this example. Person A, are you busy this evening? And person B responds, yes, I'm going to go to, to the movies. Now in this case, we use be going to, because this is a plan person B has made earlier before they're asked the question. And for this reason, we cannot use will. So we're talking about a plan that was made before the moment of speaking, and that's why we're using the be going to form. However, if we haven't made plans, then you can say either, I will probably uh, watch TV, or I'm probably going to watch TV. So in both of these examples, it's not a plan, we're just, uh, we're, we're deciding at the moment of speaking. And if it's a decision you're making at the moment of speaking, it's completely okay to use the will form as well as the be going to form. Um, so again, both will and going to are possible in this situation because we're predicting what will happen. We're not, we don't have any plans made. Uh, and just another point uh, to remember, even if you make a mistake here, even if you misuse will and going to, a native speaker uh, will probably understand what you mean without any problems. Uh, so this isn't a mistake that's going to stop you from being understood. It's not going to block uh, communication. So of course it's good to practice using it correctly, but if you make a mistake, uh, most likely you will still be understood. Okay, I'll give you guys a little break from listening to me uh, because I have a practice exercise for you. So I've got three sentences. Your job here, have a look at the sentence, look at the context, and choose which form we should use. Should we use the will plus infinitive or the be going to plus infinitive? So remember, if it's a plan made before the moment of speaking, uh, we should use be going to. If it's an instant decision, uh, we should use will, a decision made at the moment of speaking, not a, not a plan. And if we're just making a prediction, both forms are possible. So I'll give you guys a little bit of time to complete the exercise and then we'll correct together. Okay, uh, let's have a look. So number one, I'm really excited about my trip to France next month. So you're excited about your trip to France. And that would suggest that this is a plan that you have already made. Maybe you've already booked your flights. You've decided what you're going to do. So for that reason, I am going to visit Paris. Okay, so we're using be going to to talk about a plan we've made for the future. Number two, so person A says, the phone's ringing. Person B replies, I will answer it. Now the reason we're using will here, this isn't a plan person B has made. It's not something they've thought about uh, in the past. The phone rings and they're making this decision at the moment of speaking. So if for example, you were to say, um, I am going to answer it. It would sound a little bit strange because this would sound like you've already made the decision to answer the phone before it started ringing. Okay, uh, so that's why we're using will plus infinitive here. It's the de a decision made at the moment of speaking, not before. And number three, it's very cloudy. I think it. So here we're looking at the sky. We're making a prediction. And for that reason, 
both forms are possible and they both express the same meaning. Okay, so just some important points to remember. We can use the present simple to talk about things that are scheduled to happen. So remember the example of the airport. My flight leaves in one hour. This is scheduled to happen at a future time. We can use the present continuous to talk about plans or arrangements. I'm meeting my friend after work. I'm having lunch with my family tomorrow. We can use will and be going to to make predictions. So both these forms can be used in the same way. Uh, will can also be used to talk about decisions that are made at the moment of speaking. So ring ring, phone rings, I'll answer it. I'm making this decision right now as I'm speaking. And finally, be going to is used to talk about plans which are made before the moment of speaking. So you've decided to go to Spain, you booked your hotel, you paid for your flights, I'm going to go to Spain. And it's a plan, but the decision was made before I'm speaking. Okay, uh, guys, thank you very, very much for watching. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you did and you'd like to see more videos like this, please feel free to like, uh, subscribe. Uh, also, if you've got any questions, please leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. Uh, in our next video, we're going to look at some more future forms, but uh, some slightly more complicated forms. So hopefully I'll see you uh, for that video. Thank you very much. Cheers.